my mouse. Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Seagrove, and I'm here today with three great gentlemen who are here to help us figure out what to play for OCIC. Each of them have uh, varying um, amounts of involvement in the tournament. So, uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself and let us in on that? Uh, Stefan, why don't you go first? Yeah. Hi, so I'm Stefan. Uh, you may know me as the winner of NAIC last year, and I'm the one who is competing. I'm competing in the Ocean International, so I've been in Melbourne for three days now, and I've been testing a lot for this event. All right, good luck. Uh, Joe, Thanks. go ahead. Yeah, I'm Joe Bernard. I'm fortunate enough to be one of the commentators at the Ocean International Championships this year. I've also been doing a good amount of testing to get a good variety of the see like all the decks just when I'm prepared to commentate over anything. So I've tested a broad range of things overall. All right, Rukan. Hey, I'm Rukan. Um, I'm a writer for Poke Beach, and um, if I'm known for anything, it's probably my Malamar lists uh, earlier in this season. Um, earlier. I am also testing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also testing a lot for this format, just just for fun though. I'm okay. not going to OCIC. I think I'm the one person here that's not actually in Australia right now. <laughs> I'm not either, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, very cool. All right, so um, real quick, Joe, I want you to speak about um, commentating. How do you like it compared to playing, and um, what are sort of the pros and cons? Uh, commentating is a lot less stressful. Like the lead up to the tournament as a player is always like a minefield. You're always worried about uh, just random decks popping up in right. the tournament, just getting mugged off by certain tech cards people want to play. And you're always constantly worried about your deck choice. Whereas in commentating, you have none of those nerves. Like I really like just talking about Pokemon. I've done it for years now. So it's just like, just, I know it's going to be fun when I go to commentate. So it's just a lot more chilled out for me. So. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. Okay, great. Um, well, you're good at it, so I'm looking forward to, to hearing you're on the mic. Um, all right. So, team up legal for the first time. Um, which two or which one uh, GX Pokemon? doesn't necessarily have to be a team up. Which one GX Pokemon do you expect to make the uh, biggest splash? Um, Rukan, why don't you start? Uh, Ultra Necrozma, because Sky Scorching is just so format defining right now. Okay. Um, I actually meant from Team Up, but I just realized I did oh, not say that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so from Team Up. It has to be Pikachu Zekrom then. Okay. Why Pikachu Zekrom? The, the only GX in that set that I think is really seeing much play. There's okay. not that much of a contest between the other ones right now. Okay. Um, Stefan. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, Pikachu and Zekrom is... I mean, you're talking only about GX Pokemon, right? Yes. Yeah, so Pikachu and Zekrom is no contest uh, the best one. Okay. Um, Joe, you agree? Yeah, I mean, Todd's done his best to hype. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then let's... Um, well, a couple more similar questions in that vein, at least. Um, what's the second best um, GX Pokemon coming out of the set? I think... Oh, if I'm just going to go first. Sure. Um, yeah. I think Venusaur is more likely to see play uh, out of all the other GX Pokemon team up, but I think actually Gengar Mimikyu is probably the second best in my book. Even with the Dark Weakness? Even with the Dark Weakness, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Stefan, what do you think? Um, well, I think so. I mean, they have different roles, right? Like, Gengar Mimikyu can be played like. As a one-off in a Malamar deck, so the Venusaur is its own beast, you play it. And I think it's actually pretty decent, so I'm going to go with Celebi Venusaur. Okay. Um, Joe? I think Celebi Venusaur is probably the second strongest. The EV Snacks is really versatile, so it can like, be a maybe in a lot of decks, but it, it's, it doesn't seem to be outweighing a lot of the other cards, just because there's headaches of starting with it. And there's yeah. a lot of non DX stuff that, like, it's just game losing at times. Right. So, for that reason, it's just a maybe at the moment in a bunch of things. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's talk about the best non GX car Pokemon to come out of the set. Um, Joe, what do you think? 
uh, Coco Prism Star is ridiculously good. Okay. <laughs> ridiculously good. It's carrying Peak Realm on its back. Zapdos okay. Jolteon is going to play it. Even like random tool drop decks can put it in. All sorts of different decks can just have it because it's just good enough to play. Okay. Like people are switching to like small Volkner packages just because of this card. Essentially, it's it's carrying a lot of weight on its shoulders, and it's just on such a high power spike. That amount of guaranteed energy acceleration is just really wrong in the game. <laughs> to be honest, okay. like it's fine that the Prism Star, and it's fine that Muck can shut it down, and you need to get it off early, etc. Sometimes, but it's a very very powerful card. Okay. Uh, Rukan, what do you think? Uh, I have to agree with Joe here. Definitely Coco Prism Star is the number one. If I had to just like point out a number two just so I can get out something different, probably Jirachi. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the card myself, but um, it is very impactful and is good at what it does. Okay. Stefan, what do you think? Um, so, okay. So, as an individual card, the Coco Prism Star is the best one, but it, I mean, it's a Prism Star, so of course its effects are going to be better than a random Pokemon. Right. Um, all around, Jirashi has a lot of power. I'm gonna. Go, I think that Zapdos is actually uh, maybe. I don't know if it's better than Jirashi, but like it brings Nightwing deck a huge amount of aggressivity. Like you can, it's a way to knock out uh, basic Pokemon on John one, like anything Zora, Ralts, whatever you you want to play that evolves, and that actually does a lot to make the format more aggressive, faster, and more. Um, Harder to for evolution decks. Okay. Um, give me one deck coming out of this set that you think is, um, or sorry, one deck that did not come out of this set that is stronger now because of the meta shift. Oh, I know, um, I know. <laughs> okay, Stefan, when do you start? Uh, Malamar from the Chrisma. Okay. Uh, yeah, because basically it gains uh, Jirashi and more importantly Viridian Forest, which is very, very strong. Uh, basically, the, the deck's issue before was uh, its lack of energy consistency. I mean, basically, sometimes you needed the metal energy, you didn't get it. Um, I know that some players played uh, unit energy instead to compensate. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, Rainbow House and Adam Hawkins played it and got top. 16 and top 8 respectively at Harrogate, so this worked. Uh, but I think just having a way to search out uh, Metal Energy, but also act as a stadium so you can counter Shrine, you can counter um, Thunder Mountain, whatever broken stadiums there are. Uh, yeah, it's just been very, very good in testing. Okay. Um, Rukan, I'm going to come to you last because I'm sure your answer was just stolen, uh, but I'm going <laughs> to, if you want to say the same thing, feel free. If you want to say something else, feel free. Uh, Joe, what do you think? <laughs> I think Zoroark's still really good. Okay. Uh, I think, like, a low and Grimer isn't a new card, but it's the new card that's in every new deck, basically. <laughs> okay. It becomes, like, legitimately very good for the deck. Yeah. Really good for the... the uh, Lycanroc gets stronger when there's potential for three prize Pokemon being on the board, weakness or not. And, um, yeah, Zoroark just getting extra consistency help is just so useful. You can move the Lily now so you get more turn one attachments, which is good in an aggressive meta. And luck is just so strong. People are deviating towards the base builds, so it's just solid. Just really, like, you're just going to draw reasonably well every game, and that's just all you really want. You just want to be in the game sometimes, and that deck provides it. Yep. Cool. Uh, Rukian, what do you think? I agree with Stefan here. I think Ultra Necrozma is probably the deck that gains the most, but um, just to name a third deck, Lost March with Pokecoms okay. and Amalga now. It's just. If it weren't for the Ultra Necrozma matchup, I think that deck would just be crazy out there. But unfortunately, it's just got one Achilles heel, and it's a pretty big, pretty big target. Okay, uh, Joe, I have one question specifically for you. Um, I saw your video on top ten decks. That was a great video, and um, the deck that stood out to me actually, um, I mentioned this to you earlier, was Pissimian Coco, because yeah. it had one. In your chart, it had one very bad matchup, which was Venusaur mm -hmm. Celebi, which I don't think is uh, the best deck in the world. And then mm -hmm. everything else was close to even or above. Um, why is why is Coco uh, Passimian the play or not the play? I mean, I think those very favorables can be pretty hard text for. So, like, if Pika Zekrom wants to put in a Zerka tree, it can... 
Um, the Zorark matchup isn't actually the best, surprisingly, because it can get mugged off by Muck, and just Acer Roller Ring is easy for them. Uh -huh. So they have to be, keep hitting their energies, keep hitting Guzmas all the time, and it's a lot for them to keep up with, because Zorark will just be hitting 120 every turn. Right. They might be better off just trying to spread, to be honest, against Zoroark. Even then, they can punish you. If Zoro Rock is only playing like one, it's a little one power pad, spreads actually a better line a lot of the time than for Simko, which is really okay. weird. Um, and the fact is that some of the Malamar decks can even, they can use Giratina to knock out their own stuff and just spam Let Loose on you. And if they're playing Lunala Prism Star, they can limit their own bench. They have fighting resistance. Like, if people actually care about Simian, they can beat it if they want to. And uh, Lost March is one of these decks that, like, it looks really nice to have a really good favorable Lost March, but you're already just, like, Lost March players are already worried about Ultra Squids, so they're just, it's kind of, like, already a worry. And people can, like, tech Sky Pillar and stuff as well, which isn't the right. best, but it, it's on people's radar, so there's always ways to get around monkeys. Okay. Um... Rukian, we'll start this one with you. What do you think is um, the best tech or two techs for the tournament? Uh, for which deck? Just, um, in, just general? in general, like, oh, I want to throw. Um, I guess that's yeah. That I should probably specify that. I, I will say that a good deck for countering um, other decks that you expect to see. Um. So what I've been doing is I, I took the core of the uh, Psychic Malamar deck. And I just, uh, I got rid of the Lunala Prism Star and got rid of one more card. And I just added in a single Metal and a single Ultra Necrozma. And I, I found that's been working out really, really well for me. Um, I really only want Ultra Necrozma for the, the GX attack most of the time. Um, I don't like running choice bands. I don't want to commit the deck space to it. And I don't like that the uh, dedicated Ultra lists have like, a lot of Metal and a lot of stuff that isn't a okay. good Acro Bike target. So I like having the extra acro bike efficiency. What I found is just my early games are a lot more aggressive than Ultra Malamar, even though Viridian's in the format. But then I still have the Ultra Necrozma if I want to swing the late game. Okay. And uh, that's been working out pretty well for me. So Ultra Necrozma is the yeah, tech. Yeah, and as awesome. a tech in Psychic Malamar, as opposed to playing a dedicated Ultra list. Cool. Uh, Stefan, what, what tech or techs do you think are good for this tournament? Um, Absol. Absol is is just great. Like it breaks. And what does it do for break. those? Who oh, Absol. Uh, basically, it's a bench sitter that makes it so that the opponent's basic uh, Pokemon have one more retreat cost. It might be only work on the active for the. I mean, it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah. So basically, what it means uh, in practice is that Jirashi plus Escape Board doesn't work. You still need to attach one energy to, to Jirashi to retreat in addition to the Escape Board. And that means that, like, just the existence of Absol means that any deck that uses Jirashi plus SK board as, a, as an engine also has to play a good amount of switching cards. That means either switch or escape rope. And even if they do play, play this, it's like it makes their life much harder. It makes uh, their, uh, it can make their hands much more awkward. So, okay. yeah, it's a single Absol in any deck that can afford the space. Uh, can really do much against, do a lot against uh, Zapdos Jirashi, against uh, Malamar decks that run Jirashi, and so on. Okay. Uh, Joe? Uh, Baby Buzzwell is pretty much my pick. Um, I think Viridian Forest is a big enabler, actually, for this card. I've thought about playing Baby Buzz in Psychic Mally and Ultra Mally. Uh, I've thought about playing it even in the Cephalon, because you can B-string out the <laughs> fighting energy. Like, honestly, you can just play this card right now. It's so... Powerful in the matchups where it's powerful, and uh -huh. Zoroark and uh, Pikarom are a good percentage of matchups. Yeah, but surprise time turn, especially in those decks where it's not really a commonplace. It's just going to be a huge like game one. I win off of one card alone, and that's just big. Okay, um, so let's talk. I'll mention one more. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, I just. I, I only saw this, like, a, a, I haven't tested this yet, but I saw it in play on one of the Facebook videos. It's like a, a single Tapu Koko in your Ultra Malamar list. And then if your opponent, like, benches Jirachi, Let Loose, Malamar, Malamar, you Koko flip once, Giratina ability once, and now you're Sky Scorching for four prizes. So for two attacks, you're taking four prizes, even though they didn't bench a GX. 
That's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one way to, like, it's a single card, and you can make a big comeback play in the Ultra Malamar Mirror. Uh, I don't know how good that. Oh, and if you're on a skateboard and your opponent has Absol, you can escapeboard the Coco and you have a free privet again. Nice. <laughs> True. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't know if the deck space can really afford it. I think maybe if you cut like a Giratina. It's just a thought. I yeah. thought might be good. Cool. It's good in DC. It's what? Good in DC, Mali. Okay. No, no, I, I think yeah. it has to be with Ultra Malamar because you're combining it with the Sky. Oh, the sky. My yeah. DC builds metal one Ultra. <laughs> oh, the one metal one Ultra, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Is everyone doing that now? <laughs> oh, dude, it's so good. Sky Scorching. Oh my god. Um, so yeah. much. Awesome. Well, let's. Um, let me ask you a couple questions about decks that had been doing very well. Um, Blacephalon was dominant. Um, in my mind, the, the best decks were like Blacephalon, Night, uh, Lost March, or maybe not Lost March, but I guess Blacephalon and um, Decidueye Zorg Nine Tails. Do those or other decks that were doing super well still have uh, this, a tier one spot? Uh, Stefan, what do you think? Um, like they are not dead by any means, but I feel like these decks all struggle against Picasekram. Picaram, Picazek, whatever you want to call it, okay. fan okay. Like there's been a bit debate uh, around some of people, some people here who, about how we should call the deck, uh, but that's another <laughs> that's a question for another time. Um, yeah, and for example, Basic Phenon is a very aggressive deck, a deck that you know wants to attack very quickly, the kind of deck that can beat basically any matchup just if it goes fast enough, if it gets a good enough start. And Picaram is basically the same thing but better. And against Basic Phenon. If you get a good enough start, you can actually skip their bistering turns entirely with Tag Ball GX. You go from five prizes to two or something. Uh, so it has the advantage in the matchup if you can go quickly enough. Um, so, uh, what was the other decks you mentioned again? Um, Zorark, Decidueye, and Blacephalon. Yeah, yeah Zorark, Decidueye. Oh, I actually don't know if it was that good in the previous... Format. Like it, it, it did well, but it, it, I was never convinced it was that amazing. It was like the, yeah, it, it could be a lot of stuff, but it also felt a bit inconsistent. And I think that now you have to get to be even more consistent than before because again, the format is quicker. Zapdos can pick up your Zora, your Ditto, your Roulette, whatever, uh, very quickly. Uh, so I wouldn't play something like that. That needs a, a better setup or maybe a different version of the deck I'm not sure but yeah okay. maybe people can still I, I mean I don't want to say that these decks are dead or anything just right. they don't feel as good as before for sure um, Joe Rook anything to add to that? Uh, Joe go first yeah I was gonna, just mentioning ZDT I actually prefer Zora Frogos now because uh it's faster, you don't play candies, and Pokecon just makes frogs way stronger. Um, and there's some merit list just to can pick off she's for fun. Again, it, like the meta seems like the, the sniping approach is actually really solid right now against a lot of stuff. And you want to be playing a 4-4 Zoroark still, because otherwise that those decks will just eat you. So ZDT feels a little worrying to just have a 3-3 Zoro line, like you've at least got added stretcher. You've got to hope that your beacon just lives sometimes, and that's just scary. So I want to play a no-candy list instead and just have frogs instead. That seems stronger. And for the Cephalon, I agree with uh, Stefan. I think its power spike turn is too late compared to uh -huh. the new non-GX stuff and uh, Picaron. Uh -huh. Rukin, what do you think? So I think the issue of ZDT last format was uh, following LAIC. Uh, Blacephalons immediately started running Energy Switch, Good. and then... Um, with energy switch, the Blacephalon matchup just wasn't favorable anymore. But the thing is, like, uh, ZDT has a really, really good Malamar matchup. Like, compared to something like Frogs, which you can just get Marshadowed into repeatedly. Um, ZDT, you have GX attack for Ultra Necrozmas, you just hit Ultra Necrozmas for weakness, and the counter catcher Snowy Winds and Malamar without killing it play. And these are all very, very strong against Malamar. Um, like, in the I live in the Northeast America and region, and this region is just Malamar, 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 Malamar. Um, 
Like, you go to a Lee Cup, half the decks are always Malamar, and the only decks that do well are either you play Malamar, you play a Malamar deck that's tech for the mirror, or you play a deck that counters Malamar. That's ZD is probably the king of that, and if you're expecting a lot, a lot of, of alternate crossmen in your area, ZDT is just it's just the play. So like a lot of people in the Northeast, if they're not playing Malamar, they're playing ZDT. And it's just it's just kind of how our meta is. Cool. Um, is it good for OCIC? Uh, it seems a little too risky. I, I doubt OCIC is going to have the uniformity that Northeast Coast America does, but um, I, I think it's really really strong in the right meta. Uh, plus. You have the fairy attacker, which I, I'm, I'm kind of a little worried about Wonder Labyrinth, because that's kind of creeping its way around uh, deck lists I've seen, and I, I appreciate that having fairy attackers is good. And you can even tech, I also like the tech Mimikyu GX. Um, I haven't found, I don't know if I should run it. I, I think it's really cute. I think it has some potential, but we'll see. Like I said, ZDT is only going to succeed if there's a lot of Malamar uh, running. Um, if you have to deal with too much Pikachrom, you're just lights out. Okay, cool. One more question, and then we'll start uh, rounding it up. So, in um, at the very beginning of the last format, Zorark did super well um, as control, and then um, basically energy switch and Blissephalon ended it. And then, um, does Zorark control come back now? Does it have a place? Um, Joe, what do you think? It gains a cool, uh, cool few tools in Wonder Lab and a few other pieces here and there. Um, but if you think Pikachu Zekrom is going to be popular, it's a big no-go. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see a real good way for you to deal with them unless like you're doing like a random Lugia GX if they just chose to put all six energy on the active to YOLO swag into the game. <laughs> but they just, they Which just... they shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't have to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do a normal game plan and just outrace you. Even Zapdos Jolteon, they can have the means of acting in a zero aura. It protects them against Absol and then it protects them against mid as well. So it, it feels like a good one block. Um, so those two things are the big worries for Zora Lock. But um, I mean, if Zora Rock is all playing all unit energies, it's not hard to just hammer them out the game. Not hard to out resource a decent amount of other decks out there. But Lost March has infinite damage cap as well, basically now with a Mulga, so there's a lot of new fear factor kind of decks coming out that sure. makes me think Zora Lock yeah. probably won't come back and it's a very specific build. Cool. Even even like Lost March, you like Skull Grunt them and you see they're holding a net ball and you're just like, oh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lost March is a, is a, is a loss. Uh, for sure. Okay. Um, I think we're good on that. So let's, uh, unless, unless Stefan, if you disagree and you think it's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm, no. Okay. Uh, sorry, but um, uh, no. I mean, zero control. Like what what Joe said. Basically, yeah, it's. I mean, maybe, maybe depending on how the meta shifts. But right now, with the threat of Picasso Kram, I think you don't play zero control. Okay. Cool. Um, so let's talk. La let's in start running down. Um, a question I like to ask is like, what is the second best deck uh, for the tournament? Um, because I, I never want to ask someone to like reveal their play, but, um, two of you won't be playing. So for <laughs> two of you, I'm going to ask what, what is the best deck for the tournament? Um, I, I had one more question. I'm sorry, actually. Um, but we'll go ahead and do this. And then Stefan, you can, uh, say what, what you think is the second best deck for the tournament. Um, so Joe, go ahead. What do you think is the best deck for the tournament? Um, I think Ultra Squids or Mali that plays one Ultra Necrozma. I think it just gives you good outs against the non GX stuff that you'll see. And you have the damage ramp for one shot tag teams and other decks. So it feels like you're pretty well covered with Malamar. As long as you play like the 10 ball search cards minimum now and Acrobikes and try and just consistency it out to all hell, you'll be pretty fine, I think, with the deck. Cool. Uh, Rukin, go ahead. The same thing, like I said, Psychic Malamar with 1-1 one, one Metal Ultra. It's been really, really good for me. Uh, plus, it's the OCIC, so I'm not expecting Malamar to get hard countered quite yet. It's like really, really early. Maybe for Collinsville, you just jump off the Malamar train. If like if it does well at OCIC, you jump off the Malamar train, you hop on the Decidueye train or something like that. I don't know. But for now, it, it seems really, really good. Okay. Um, Stefan, what's the the number two deck for the tournament? The best deck you're not going to play is how I normally ask you. 
the best deck I am. Well, I don't know what I'm playing yet, but uh-huh. um, I guess the best deck I am not playing. Uh, probably Lost March. Okay. Lost March is good. Uh, I just don't like the deck. I mean, there are. Okay, so first of all, Ultra, um, as we've discussed, Ultra Necrozma destroys the deck. And it's not also, it has issues with the Rondros Labyrinth. Uh, because, yeah, you can just, they can just prevent you from attacking. So you would need to play a lizard plays like a Counter Stadium, maybe Shrine of Punishment or something. But uh, you don't really want to play stadiums, so, and you have to find a space for it. Um, so, yeah. I'm, Personally, I just also I don't the times when I try to play as much I just don't don't end up doing well with it. It feels like I'm always breaking or something. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of subjective. Uh, but yeah, I'm not playing as much. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna roll my last question into shoutouts, and so that hopefully people will hear the shoutouts. So let's do um, shoutouts, and then say what uh, you think is going to be. If there's one deck you do not want to lose to going into this tournament, like either because um, you think it's just going to be very widely played, or um, it's just you hate the deck, you don't want to lose to it, or you think it's the deck, it's the play. Um, what's the one deck you do not want to lose to going to this tournament? And but before you answer that, give us your, any shoutouts that you might have. Um, Stefan, why don't you start? Okay. Um, well, well, <laughs> um, shout out to. Well, uh, my team, AB Planet, shout out to Poké Beach. I'm a writer for them as well, so you can check out my articles if you're a subscriber. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, but that's not, like a, that's not a shout out except to myself, I guess. <laughs> shout out um, to me. <laughs> and so, the, um, what was the, the question again? Um, what do you think, what deck is the one deck that you oh, will yeah, the not... deck I don't want to yeah. lose to. Um, I feel there's going to be a lot of Malamar. So I don't. I want to play a deck that has a good Malama matchup. Okay. Uh, Joe. Is it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I was talking too much as always. Go ahead, okay. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so check out my YouTube channel, uh, Omnipoke. Also Busted channel. On uh, on Facebook, I also do coaching. Good luck to all my students uh, who are attending, and also good luck to Seb Simmons, my CC teammate as well. Check them out on Facebook. And for me, I wouldn't want to lose to Zoro Rock. More specifically, don't just auto lose to Muck. Have an answer to <laughs> Muck, please. It's just dumb. You lose to Muck. Don't give him that freebie. It's yeah. stupid. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Rukan, shout outs and the one deck you do not want to lose to. Uh, shout out to Poke Beach. I'm a writer for them. As for like the one deck, uh, it's not really an archetype. But there's just been this flood of like double let loose and no lele decks in my area, and I'm just not okay with that. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I don't know, Coco flip sky scorching them and be like, okay, this let loose is easier prizes, Drachi is easier prizes for me than lele. Let's just give me those. So that that's yeah. the one thing. I'm just tired of it. Just get these <laughs> let loose out of my face. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, thanks again for watching, and good luck to everybody who's attending. Peace out.